railroad north of Tombstone, Arizona Territory, May 26, 1889. I thought I'd seen everything. One thing to rob, but why do they have to kill just to kill? Why do mad dogs bite? And Clay, how is it a little handful of Apaches can keep getting away from the army all the time? There's just got to be an answer somewhere. There is. Geronimo. An actual account from the pages of my newspaper, the Tombstone Epitaph. This is the way it happened, in the town too tough to die. Tombstone Territory. May 29, 1889. News of Geronimo's return across the border from his lair in the Sierra Madres brought bitter memories and grim determination to the people of the territory. Memories of blood and death, and a determination to destroy once and for all the menace of the renegade Apache and his followers. The 6th Mexican Infantry under Colonel Lorenzo are stationed along the border to check any move south the hostiles might make. Mm -hmm. We know Geronimo is somewhere in this area. It means he's cut off from his regular sources of weapons and supplies. Now. What ammunition he had must be running low by now. Probably why he hit the quartermaster's supply train. Fortunately, there was no ammunition aboard. Meaning that sooner or later he's going to have to take chances he'd ordinarily try to avoid. We're well aware of that, Hollister. I'd like to get to the point. All right. General Crook has evolved a plan. Each town will form a patrol unit under the direction of local authorities. These units will patrol different areas until the hostiles are sighted. That's a good plan. Yes. In the event the hostiles are sighted, the patrol unit will send riders to the nearest telegraph dispatch station and inform Fort Huachuca immediately. Then maintain visual contact with the enemy until relieved by the punitive troops. Well, Lieutenant, if we see the Indians, you can bet they're going to see us. And by the time your punitive troops get into action, Geronimo will be miles away. Just a pair of braves can hold back a small patrol until he's clear. A rear guard action? That's right. You give this ignorant savage a great deal of credit. Well, maybe you don't give him enough. <laughs> Fortunately, the army is unimpressed by legends of the invincible Apache. Yeah, I can understand that. The troops that have come up against Geronimo are in no condition to talk about it. You'll have good reason to thank the army when we stretch this butcher at the end of a rope. Look, Lieutenant, I know an awful lot of men that have fought Indians all their lives. They don't underestimate Apaches. Apaches? At best, not underestimate what's in store for them. Just one question, Lieutenant. Have you ever even seen a hostel? June 2, 1889. Sheriff Hollister and his men had relentlessly scoured the mountains for the wily murderer Geronimo. Well? Try down south tomorrow. See you at center. People get their backsides sore straddling a horse eight to ten hours a day. But with me, it's my feet. 
never could understand that. Well, maybe it's because you keep trying to put those size 12 feet of yours in a size 9 boots. Wait, please. Oh, shucks. Don't your feet ever get sore? Yeah, I just get saddle sore. You better get some supper. Get to bed. Sun up, remember? Yeah. Wonder if that Geronimo ever sleeps. I don't know. If he does, I'd sure hate to have his dreams. Dover's Pool Palace on the edge of town. Geronimo. The bold renegade Apache had taken a liking to white man's ways. He showed his contempt for the army and law by playing pool under their very noses. Geronimo held the proprietor captive while awaiting a supply of ammunition from a merchant named Kylie, long suspected of illegal traffic with the Indians. Geronimo? You make me miss. This comb. The only way it would look good on me is with one of those lace shawls. I can't wear it this way. You have the comb. Is not that enough? Our friend might bring some shawls with him tonight. He was told to bring ammunition. You want me to look pretty, don't you? There will be shawls. Now, woman, let me play this game in peace. Geronimo. did you bring? 1,550 rounds of 4570s and 2,000 rounds of 4440s. That's better than I thought I could do. It's hard to get prime quality ammunition in such quantities. But I know you want the best for your warriors, and that's what I brought. Anything less would not be wise. I think you understand that. Oh, I'd never sell you anything but the best. Never. Read them out. Thank you, Geronimo. Uh, a man likes to know his friends appreciate him. The shawls? Let us consider these womanly things a token of your friendship, friend. I consider it an honor, Geronimo. Take these. He's seeing pink Indians. Geronimo at the pool palace. Well, it won't hurt to check. He's picked up a lot of things from the white man, most of them bad. You ready? Yeah, I'm all set. Uh, Let's go. Play the pool. The sheriff's coming.
The night of June 2, 1889. With one of Geronimo's braves in jail, Clay Hollister sought information. I said sit down. How long have you known Geronimo? Answer me. You don't have no right to arrest me. It's not against the law to know Geronimo. It is against the law to provide hostiles with weapons. I don't do that! You made contact with Kylie so that Geronimo could get the ammunition. How can you wear that? I have a right to wear it. It's mine. I suppose he gave you that too? He gave me everything. Does that suit you? I wonder how many women died so that you could wear the jewelry stripped from their bodies. You try to scare me. It won't work, Mr. Sheriff. I think you and Geronimo deserve each other. Went to Kylie's store, Clay. Afraid it was no use. Too late? Yeah. The time we got there, he cloned the coop. The store was wide open and the cash box on the counter was empty. Ah, uh, they won't get far. Learn anything? Well, let's lock her up. No, Jimmy. Give her a junk and get her out of here. You heard what he said. Pick up your stuff. Geronimo's camp in the mountains outside Tombstone. The Apache killer and the merchant Kylie made an incongruous pair. Uh, I stayed as long as I dared, Geronimo, but when I heard they'd found that ammunition case, I had to work fast. I only managed to save a few dollars. I don't know what's gonna happen to me now. My braves, what of them? Tell me. One's dead and one's in jail. But, but what'll happen to me? My business is gone, my good name. It's terrible. You've got to help me, Geronimo. Lend me money so I can start someplace else. Now, Indians believe in helping a friend in trouble, and, and you know, I've always been a friend of your people. Al always a fair deal and the best merchandise. My people do all for those they know. Who are their friends? Seize this carrion. No, Geronimo, I, I am your friend. Friend, to you the Indian is nothing more than a fool. To be cheated, robbed of what little he has. No, no. Kill him. No, no, Geronimo, Geronimo. Oh, no. You've had one chance to keep your neck out of a noose. Tell us where Geronimo's camp is. The rope would be a gentle gift of sleep compared to the death I would have as a betrayer of Geronimo. He's got a real good argument there, Clay. 
Where is he? Where's Geronimo? He is everywhere. He is nowhere. The morning of June 3. Four miners stumbled into Geronimo's hands. Drop these things. One of my braves has been slain. I will kill two white men in return. These. These two. Another of my warriors is held captive. Unless he is freed, I will slay every white man, woman, and child who falls into my hands. Tell this in Tombstone. Go! The afternoon of June 3. <laughs> The people of Tombstone were grim witnesses to Geronimo's brutal reprisal. June 4, 1889. Lieutenant Forsyth and his patrols had made no contact with Geronimo. He came to claim the prisoner. My instructions are to guard your Indian prisoner until a detachment arrives to take him into military custody. Those orders are direct from the commanding officer. That brave isn't free. A lot of innocent people are going to get killed. Miners, homesteaders. Must be hundreds up in the hills around here, and Geronimo will slaughter him as fast as he can find him. I got to let him go. You're making a mistake, a bad one. You know I intend to make a full report. Well, the telegraph office is still open. Help yourself. I intend to. show you where Geronimo is. Where is he? About a 20-minute ride from here. He's been raiding by night. Now he sleeps. How many men has he got with him? Usually three or four. He depends on secrecy to protect his hiding place. Secrecy and fear. All right, now listen to me. You'll find a, an army officer down at the telegraph office. Tell him exactly what you've told me. I'll meet you there with my deputy and we'll ride out together. Now go on. Woman, you will die. The afternoon of June 4, 1889. Dolores led the men to an isolated cabin tucked in a draw of the Mule Mountains a few miles south of Tombstone. Where is guards? It appeared to be a day to remember. The capture of Geronimo. Let's work around that way. Wait a minute. I still think we should have waited for a platoon of troopers. Lieutenant, I'll take the responsibility if anything goes wrong, but if you want to wait for the troopers... Get him before he knows what hit him. Otherwise, we'll get it from both sides. Simple enough. 
We'll pick him off from the window. And we'll get the rest from inside when they come up to see what's happened. A perfect cul-de-sac. Look, Lieutenant, the job is to get him in. The federal court will take care of him after that. All right, there's only one door, so here's what we'll do. Jimmy, I'm not one of your deputies. Jimmy? Yeah? You and I will take the front. Right. If Lieutenant Forsyth will be good enough to keep an eye on that window. I gave them both barrels, Jimmy. No man could live with a load of lead like that in him. It's not the first time he's walked away with a hole in him that would kill a horse. Well, maybe next time, Clay. Maybe. Thing is, how come a killer like him leads a charmed life? Got away, Lieutenant. You almost had your moment of glory. What's your report gonna say? It wasn't. I made an error in judgment. I shall report it as such. You know, Clay, her life ain't gonna be worth a chewed plug as long as Geronimo's running loose. We'll see that you're protected. You have my word. There's no need for that, Sheriff. I found what really matters once more. It'll be good to return. To return? To where I was raised as a child. To the convent of St. Teresa. Dolores returned to the convent of Santa Teresa. The notorious Geronimo was never actually captured. When he was old and tired, he voluntarily surrendered to General Crook and returned to the comforts of the reservation. Whistle me up a memory, whistle me back where I want to be, whistle a tune that'll carry me to Tombstone Territory. If your past has run afoul of the law, it's a handy place to be. Cause your future's just as good as your draw 
in Tombstone Territory. Whistle me up a memory. Whistle me back where I want to be. Whistle a tune that'll carry me to Tombstone Territory. Oh, 